Hey, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will look at a battery which is suitable and meant to be installed in the Jeep Wrangler 2020 JL. And probably multiple JLs. I'm not sure um, how long they're using this type of battery, but we're talking about a Group 48 battery. And this one is from Markson. Markson was a kind of sent me this battery and said, hey, can you check it out? It's specifically made for your type of car this one behind me, as well as made for start-stop. So as you might know, Jeep Wrangler, JL, they do have a start-stop technology built into the car, which you can turn off and use. It depends on your driving, it depends on if it's hot, if you wanna have AC running, or if you wanna use the start-stop. So that's something this battery should be capable of, and they claim that this one will last very long. So in this video, we will look at the battery, we'll charge it up, We'll install it together in the Jeep, how that works, I will show you. And then we'll also take it for a spin and see if the start-stop does work. If it does work at the beginning, that's great. If it stops working within the first 36 months, you are eligible to get a replacement battery, which is great. And on top, this is a AGM battery, maintenance-free. And this battery should basically do the job what's supposed to be for. Support you while driving and have all your appliances running in the car, whatever you need and without any issues. And then just, you know, have to the engine start stop as well. My car is from 2020 and I think it was built late 2019 or something. And my battery died beginning of this year. I was in need of getting a new battery. I think it was around, not even beginning, it was April or something, March, April. I needed a new battery and I was online and also in the shops looking around. If they would have told me, hey, we have this battery, I would have probably bought, um, gone with this battery. Even though I haven't tested it yet, I just unpacked it. So. Let's start with everything it comes with. The battery, you're welcome. It also comes with the manual and uh, the manual does include a couple of information about charging was not. So um, what I did already, I measured the voltage when it arrived and it arrived with 12.88 volts, which is usually for this type of battery, pretty full. Um, anyway, I did hook it up to one of those AGM charger. I do have one charger, um, it's in the description below. Uh, which I use usually for the AGM batteries and for the car batteries. That's what I did with this one. I charge it up that we are ready to go and just, you know, throw it into the car and we test it. And immediately we can use the start-stop because the battery is pretty full. So, and those AGM batteries, they like to be topped off. So that means for this type of battery, this should always be full. When it's depleting, it's not good. Over time that can happen, so the voltage is less. About more about more facts about this battery. As I mentioned, this is a Group 48 battery. It's a 12 volt AGM battery. It does have 760 cold crank amps and it's maintenance free. They call those terminals A1 terminals. In case you just want to look for a Group 48 battery with A1 terminals, here you have the dimensions so you get an idea how big this thing is or small. And as always, link in the description below. Um, as we talk, this should be around $160, $170 plus tax. Um, plus shipping depending on where you order it. So I think we talked enough. Um, I wasn't able to get this one at that time. I would have done that because this one is definitely uh, even cheaper than the one I got. And when you go with the manufacturer, OEM, whatever, you pay definitely way, way, way more. Um, it's up to you if you like that, if you want to do that, because I don't know if the batteries are all made here in the US for cheap or not or for Chrysler, I have no idea. I didn't do any research on that. That's why I don't bother about US brands or other country brands. And uh, I just wanna look for a good quality battery, which is capable of, you know, living a little longer life than the original OEM battery did. And that was less than four years. All right, let's get into the installation process, how that works. Um, should be pretty straightforward, even though I wanna mention that before, I have a couple other things attached to the battery. So those things you can ignore because you will have it way easier to get to this battery and replace it. Additionally, Jeep Wrangler does have two batteries. This is a start-stop battery, and then we have an auxiliary battery. The auxiliary battery is way smaller. It's probably just a quarter of the size of this battery, and it's way more hidden. So this one is easy accessible. Let's get to the car and let's start with that. Okay, as I mentioned, mine is a mess. So I have a lot of stuff attached and it's not wrapped up yet uh, since this, this is really a project car. But we, you don't have to bother with that stuff. So I will just go ahead and remove everything. So we see how the factory or how this comes usually almost from the factory. So, so we'll focus here on the negative first. 
and the negative is held in with a 10 millimeter here. So you should go ahead and loosen this bolt. Be careful when you have a non-insulated ratchet or wrench like I do have here, that you don't touch positive and negative at the same time. Be very, very careful doing that. Rather take your time, slow it down. And you only have to loosen it. You do not have to undo it all the way. So this nut stays on and then you can just pull the entire thing off like this and then put it to the side so it doesn't touch anything. So now we see this part. So what I'm doing, since the new battery does have those caps on, those plastic caps, I'll just use it and put it on so it's safe and secure. And ideally, it just fits perfectly. So you see that? There's no wiggle around. That's how it should be. All right, moving on to the positive terminal, which is over here, and it is protected by this rubber boot here. So what do we need to do? And here you can hopefully see it. It's harder to see because the angle, but there's also a 10 millimeter, which we have to loosen. And that's what I'm doing. Same as before. Only loosen. You do not have to entirely take it off. And now you can try to just wiggle it off, push it up. And there we have it. So now let me grab the positive side cap and let me put it on here as well. I just don't wanna mess with anything here. So since I have a bunch of wires here, I have to work my way through it a little bit and make sure that I have space, that I have everything removed. So the next step is you can remove this, uh, what is this, this cover? Uh, this box, you can remove that. Don't throw it away, clean it. Keep it and reuse it later. And now we can see the battery. So the next move should be, here's the battery. And we have on the side, which is the passenger side, we have this bolt down there. Or I think it's a, it's a bolt, I think, yeah. We have to loosen that one. And then the entire plastic will get free and we will be able to wiggle this one out. Let's see if we can get there. So take an extension, we ratchet. Now will be a little longer so you can reach it. It's still 10 millimeters. And here we have it. You can see the shape because it's pushing the battery all the way over. And now for the battery, you should be able to just flip up those handles and pull it out. And that's why we have those protective plus and minus caps here that we don't touch anything on accident. But that's how it is. Taking it out. And as always, just compare the size and if they have everything you need. You saw. Actually, that's the wrong side, right? So you saw the battery was installed this direction, this orientation. So we have here those, I don't know, those grooves or whatever, where it can be tightened and pushed in. So that's important for later. And then just look on top if they look similar, if, if everything looks close and you can check. So the one I got last time is this one, 48. HEM 760CCA. That's important that they match, so it's 70 amp hours. And we received um, the same with 760CCA. And the rest here, yeah, we have 70 amp hours also here. Perfect. What I'm doing now again, so we can see this is positive, negative, positive. I'll take those caps again, put them on here, same one over here. Just when I slide it in, that there's nothing rubbing or on accident touching those terminals. I want to highly avoid that. Make sure you don't squeeze any wires. It should slide here in place. And it felt like already. So it's pretty good. And now let's check. Let's check down here again, the bolt. That will be the area again where we install the bolt, which we just removed. So it's tightened up and not moving around. So, which means I'll use this piece again. That's the piece. So in terms of orientation, this one goes against the battery, this part. So try to slide it in. As mentioned, it should also be easier for you if you have less wires. As I always, as I say the whole time, take a long extension to your socket and it and screw it in. A 
remember everything is plastic down there almost so make it snug but don't overdo it give it a tuck if it does feel good let's move on now you have it in place now you grab your protective thing for the battery whatever it's called i have no idea what it's called it is protecting the battery basically from i guess from everything else in there make sure it fits in that's basically all what it is and now you can connect positive and negative just in reverse order so push this down the positive it might be a little bit more tight because those are new terminals so you can maybe use something to push it down and you've seen i removed already the protective covers but be careful with that and when you tighten it tighten it good and snug but don't overdo it i think push this cover down and now we can attach or connect the negative be careful it might, there might be a little spark maybe not in my case there's not same here again try to push it all the way down and then you can tighten it when you tighten it make sure it's snug as well don't overdo it wiggle around see if it holds on and if it does great so in your case you should be done with this in my case i have to close it up a couple more things because i have you know i have switches i have switch panels stuff like that which you might not have and then you don't have to bought it for you you close the engine hood and then you start driving that should be all so let's move on to the driving part and testing a battery so i'm not in the car i'll drive around check it out i want to see if start stop still works so that's really important that we do that and we test it so i'll drive around let you know what's going on because driving and holding camera is not safe if you don't have a good mount so i'll let you know in a couple minutes how it goes or maybe an hour depends on we'll see you in a bit oh by the way it did start sorry um it doesn't look that dirty when i look at it but on the camera it looks horrible dirty so i just turned on the car and the alternator is ramping up to 13.8 volts so yeah let's get started driving and i'll keep you posted and usually in the cheap when you you know use your steering wheel going down whoop, going down with this one you can see uh, in which state the start stop is and for me it's not ready yet so i'll start driving keep charging and i will see as soon as it hit kicks in Alrighty, so now you can see still charging we're rolling a little bit and battery is ready to use or let start stop work so let me stop here and see if we can do that and it just did stop so let me switch i know the camera's moving all around all the time but here start stop auto stop active and i just hit it again nice and then the alternator kicks in again so it does work then again it does work it's great to see that so i have to test it more but uh, at least we can see it does work it does hold the voltage which is important and that's uh, basically something which we'll see over time if it does work and we have 36 months to test this which is amazing so yeah let let me park the car and let me get to the summary all right let me wrap this up the battery for the cheap wrangler 2020 chl group 48 it's an hgm battery 12 volt it fits perfectly no issues at all with insulation i was running a couple errands was driving around here in la um, didn't have any issues with the start stop it worked out of the box without any issues and when i say out of the box i did charge up the battery at the beginning but um, the cheap didn't have any issue to keep the battery topped up to use the start stop all the time so it works pretty well and to be honest at this price point this is a low budget battery i feel like compared to the oem batteries in terms of quality i have no long-term test done so far it's in the car so i will keep testing it i will keep you posted fingers crossed it will not fail why should it but uh you never know so knocking on wood so anyhow this was how you install the battery in your cheap wrangler jl 2020 as i mentioned it should be the jl from 2018 to now i'm not sure about the newest models if they have the battery at the same location uh it, it's pretty straightforward if you have other stuff installed like i do with switch panels or anything like that it might plug the battery so you have to remove it first 
or disassemble first and then you have access. So that should be just pretty straightforward. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Link in the description below for the slow budget battery. As always, ask questions in the comments. I'm happy to answer those if I can. And let me know what you think about low budget batteries versus the OEM battery. Would you go with them or would you not go with them? That's, I guess, the belief question at the end. And this is a pretty new product on the market. And uh, the company sounded familiar to me, at least with lithium ion phosphate batteries, just to give you a little more background. And so far, I have seen good stuff from them. I hope to see more stuff from them, test more from them and then see how it holds, especially long-term, because that's, that's the important question. We don't want to have short-term stuff, we want to have long-term stuff. And uh, I'll, I'll have a follow-up video in case there's something happening. If not, you can assume it's working well. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you like that stuff, as always, please give it a like if you like that. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, if I earn it, I'm more than happy that you subscribe. Thank you. Cheers!